Potatoes in the sink, please. Bring Granddaddy here. Alan, Mum and Dad are here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're getting oh. too heavy. Come on, son. I can take you. Hot way. Hi, Dad. Oh, lovely to see you. Oh, your bloody father. He won't drive on the motorway. <laughs> Hi, Mum. How are you? I'm all right. And he swerved right through the lot of them going like a bullet, didn't you? Yeah, that's cool. Right between the post, Granny. Well done, my son. But it's still the wrong game, the wrong shape ball. I hate footy. <laughs> I'm a rugger bugger. <gasps> Kenny, shush. But Dad says that. Well, I'm not sure that I actually use the expression. Yes, you do. <laughs> Pass the spinach and stop corrupting our son. <laughs> You're a squealer. <laughs> Are you expecting anyone? It's Marcus. I invited him. Alan, you know he can't come here. He's your brother. You shouldn't have done that, Alan. You had no right. I thought we said it was all over. Dad! 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 Oh, God! Christ! Everybody stay where you are! Oh, my God! Get back! Kenny, Kenny! Oh, Kenny. Oh, Sit down! Kenny! Leave the boy! Leave him! Leave the boy! Leave the boy. Driver, we're on the moon. We found him in the morning. He hadn't moved. He was dehydrated, suffering from shock and hypothermia. Who raised the alarm, Sergeant Glover? His grandmother. They shot her twice and left her for dead. She crawled out a mile to the road. It took her 16 hours. God, that's awful. How did she survive? She uh, thinks that something disturbed them. They're using napalm to burn the bodies. And the boys said that he recognised his uncle's voice. 
Do you think it's possible that he could have been mistaken? It was him. Marcus Roche. Look, it took me nearly seven years to nail that lizard. Now you and your precious miscarriage agency are saying that he's innocent. We're not saying he's innocent. He slept with his family. And I got him. But he got me back. How do you mean, Sergeant Glover? He's got friends. Look, it doesn't matter. Just let him write in jail. If not for this, for all the other shit that he's pulled. He says he's a respectable property developer. <laughs> you don't make all their millions by being respectable. Marcus Roche is an extortionist. He's a blackmailing, bribe-giving, knee-capping bastard. I don't think there's any evidence of that. What are you? His lawyer? All his contacts everywhere. Police, press, home office. Couldn't get him out of this. So you just let that dog sleep. Because believe me, he can do you. I mean, he can really do you. Just ask that kid, Kenny. This is the murdered couple, Alan and Danuta, with her brother, Marcus. Marcus Roche and Alan Richmond were partners in the property development business for 14 years. Alan and Danuta had been married since 1988. The Benmark development, Dowling House, Waxham Wharf Hotel, Arkwright Court, Chelsea Mansions, all owned by Marcus or Alan or their companies. Between them, about 200 million quid's worth. That's Marcus's house. Or at least it was until Alan reported him to the Inland Revenue for tax evasion. And they impounded it. Two months later, Richmond and his family were dead. Jesus! So how did he get all this? Official or unofficial? Oh, unofficial, please. Usually by buying up slum properties in up-and-coming areas and after a while the residents decide they don't want to live there anymore. Because? Oh, you know, power cuts, contaminated water, nasty thugs pissing on the stairs, the odd Molotov cocktail in the mail, usually followed by a less than generous offer to vacate. There have been four serious fires in residential properties owned by Marcus Roche. Seven Kurdish refugees died in this one in 1998. It was called a racist attack, but nobody believed that. Marcus completed a residential flat development on the site two years later. You see, he's got friends, Wallace. Oh, I know. They keep ringing me. Very concerned to hear what we propose to do. What do we propose to do? Find the boy. Find Kenny Richmond. Any problem with that? Uh, Marcus's lawyers say Alan's relatives whisked him away to France after the trial. There's no address for them. Well, that's because they're hiding him. Well, you want to hear the funny thing? Well, how funny is it? I checked the records office, electoral rolls, everything, and Alan Richmond had no living relatives. His sons disappeared off the face of the earth. Miss Linden, nice to meet you at last. Rose Linden, I'm told you're the best investigator in your organisation. Well, I... Uh... I only deal with the best, of course. Kettle is on. Can I offer you some tea? Um, yes, please. I have Earl Grey, chamomile, peppermint. Unfortunately, no lemons. Well, peppermint, please. How can I help you? Mr. Roche, you requested this meeting, which we don't regard as strictly necessary. 
we're only at initial stages. Should like to be released by the end of the month. Oh, I don't think that's going to be possible. How is Sergeant Glover? Pardon? Poor old Mike. Still a sergeant after all these years. I guess you can do your job too well. There's no question of being released next month, Mr. Roche. But I'm innocent. Your brother-in-law, father, sister were all murdered after you'd fallen out with them over a business deal. That is ridiculous. As I said at the trial, I asked my parents to look after some money for me. Four million pounds in an offshore trust account. I'm a property developer. Sometimes you need money to be invisible. Alan was jealous because I hadn't included him in the deal. Dad got needlessly scrupulous, but I wouldn't kill them for that. Four million isn't so much at the end of the day. Do you still claim that this family rift was healed and uh, you got your money back before they were murdered? Voila. There you are. But that wasn't believed in court, Mr. Roche. We need new evidence or there's nothing we can do. What are you, some kind of imbecile? There are many problems, Mr. Roche. Not least that your mother and your nephew both placed you at the scene. I love my mother, and I think that finally she understands that. You know she's withdrawn her testimony. That's the new evidence. Mother knows now that she was mistaken, and she will say so. Look, all I need from you is a referral to the Court of Appeal, and my lawyers will deal with everything else. How much is an acquittal these days? 100,000? 150? Hmm? What about Kenny, your nephew? Alas, young Kenny's whereabouts are unknown. Such a pity he won't be able to testify. Oh, do I amuse you, Mr. Maloney? No. Did you say peppermint? He's not getting a referral from me. By the book, OK? If his mother backs him up, we make the recommendation get out of his life. Maloney, he slaughtered his whole family in total cold blood because he stole some money from him. Yeah, maybe. I can't get the measure of him. He's oddly, um... Likeable. Yeah. Well, his wife was killed in a road accident in 1999. There's one son, Max, aged 24, lives in Stoke Newington. A rush disinherited him after a family argument. What about? Doesn't say. I thought you were giving up. Yeah, I am. You're wearing a patch. Yeah, they're rather good, I find, but you do need a bit of topping up. I tell you what, I'll buy you dinner on Thursday, and you get through it without smoking if you can. No problem. You buy me dinner, right? Well, it's, it's not just dinner I want you for. You're supposed to get me drunk before you say that. Well, the fact is, I've got a sort of, um, well, it is a, a, a date, actually. You want me to come on your date? You can smoke, OK? I just need someone to, um... Make you look good and tee up for a shag? No. Well, yeah. I'll find someone for you. Who is she? Well, she, uh, backed into my trolley in the Waitrose car park. We got talking. Her name's Julie. Is she nice? Yeah, really nice. I mean, really nice. Huh. And I thought it might be a good idea if there wasn't just the two of us on a first date. No. OK, but no dross on my side of the table, so not Phil from personnel, OK? Oh, Phil's nice. He's impotent. No, that's just a rumour. Not to me it isn't. Alice, very anxious to see you. She's a lovely old lady. And brave. Here we are. Anna? Thank you, Ife. Mrs. Roche, I'm Mr. Maloney from the CJRA. This is Rose Linden. Hello. Thank you for coming. I'm Anna's personal advisor. I take care of any issues which might arise. Issues? Please, sit down. 
You wanted to ask me about Marcus. About why I said he was there when... when my family... family... It's OK, Anna. They won't stay long. Just tell them what you want to say. Anna, at the trial, you said that you saw your son Marcus Roche that night. I only said that because of Kenny. I wanted to back him up. And now that's changed. I thought... I was wrong. There had been a family disagreement, though, is that right? I don't think that's relevant to this discussion. Anna is simply saying that she was mistaken. You had fallen out with your son over money. I never understood all that. Do you think that I don't know that you two... Marcus wanted you... Ben to look, look after some money. Alan said it was illegal. We could go to jail. Now you're trying to turn my father All I said was that I'm not trying to turn my father against you. Now you have the money until I know it's legal. Huh? Or straight. Don't talk to me about straight. Well, you can't Can take, take this much hypocrisy. It was terrible. Grown men fighting like that. Shut it up. And it's you. hypocrisy. You <laughs> can't take Why is Uncle Margaret shouting at Daddy and Grandpa? Alan, shut up. Be quiet. 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 Christ, shut up, Marcus. Tell him to shut up. I said shut up, all of you. It's Kenny's birthday. Christ's sakes. Sorry, Mum. Ben only wanted to teach Marcus a lesson. What lesson? That he couldn't just trample all over people. But it's all been sorted out. It's been explained to me now. Mrs Roche, who do you think did this? Marcus would never have harmed Anuta. He loved his sister. What about you? Does he love you? He's taking care of me now. When your children are adopted, it can be complicated. I'm, I'm sorry. You said adopted? Yes. I couldn't have children. It took us five years to get Marcus, another three to get Danuta. We thought we'd never be unhappy again. I think you should go now. Mrs Roche, do you know where Kenny, where your grandson is? Because a lot of people would like to speak to him. I don't know. Alan's family took him. We lost him. You see, our information... That must have been terrible for you. Mrs Roche has told you all she can. OK. Why didn't we know that Roche and his sister were adopted? Families have secrets. She must know Alan Richmond didn't have any relatives, so why'd she lie? Unless... Unless Roche has Kenny. She changes her story, Kenny gets to carry on living. You really think he's capable of that? She was very guarded. He's very scared, I'd say. He's gonna walk, isn't he? You're wasting your time. She's lying. Hello, Sergeant Glover. Is this a coincidence, or do we have a mutual love of ornamental gardens? I lifted your address off the police computer, waited around and then followed you. I don't think that's quite the procedure, Sergeant Glover. Soft procedure? Have you found that kid yet? Without Kenny Richmond, nobody's got anything. Roach knows that. You're making it easy for him. And while he's still in jail, there's still a chance of finding a boy, so stop screwing around. I want to tell you something, Mike. It is Mike, isn't it? We don't appreciate being followed, and what is that? I'm being careful. So should you. All right, that's enough. Come on, let's go. What do you do to you? I'm overzealous, it seems. Don't be his friend, Rose, because he'll hurt you. I mean, he'll really hurt you.
Max? Hi. Looking for a bike? Uh, no. I'm Mr Maloney. This is Rosalind, and we're from the Criminal Justice Review Agency. We want to talk to you about your father, Marcus Roche. Look, I am nothing to do with him. Do you understand? Why not? I live my own life here. Just go, please. Go away. Max? What did he do to you? He killed my mother. Is that enough for you? Thought she died in a car crash. You don't really know him, do you? What about your grandmother, Anna? You ever going to see her? Look, I'm very busy. He got her. He got them all. Well, I'm sorry, Max, but we need to ask about your cousin Kenny. He could be a very important witness. Yeah, kid Kenny really dropped the old bastard in it, didn't he? Well, he's gone missing and we're trying... Come on. This is my father. Of course he's missing. What do you mean? You'll never find him. Nobody will. He writes to me every three days for the last five years. Well, do you reply? If you see my father, tell him... Tell him I'm looking forward to spitting on his grave. from personnel, isn't it? Yes. Oh, Rose, no, don't. Look, there was nobody else I could... Look, just sit down, will you? For Christ's sake, bloody hell. Look, sit down. You're always on the way out, aren't you? I ask you to do this one thing for me. Just be nice for once in your life. I don't get enough sex. I want some sex. Um... So unless you're volunteering, please don't blow this for me. Hi. You must be Julie. Yeah, hi. Um, I had a bit of trouble finding it, so sorry. No, it's fine. No, great. You came. Great. Lovely. I mean, you look lovely. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take this for you. Um, this is Rose Linder, my, uh, my, my, my colleague from work. Um, uh, please sit down. I'll, uh... Right. Like a drink? Oh, yes, please. Marcus. Hello, Mum. Hello, Marcus. They've been to see me. I hope they were polite. Yes. Oh, yes. Is there anything you need to tell me, Mum? No. It's exactly as it was. Good. That's good, Mum. I love you. Yes. Good night. Hang on, kid. Hang on. And then I was in Zimbabwe for three years. Oh, fantastic. I was there in 1993. Yeah? Did you like it? Oh, God, yeah. It was a bit hairy. But, oh, uh, tell me about it. So what were you doing? I was doing some volunteer work for a charity organisation. What were you doing there? Oh, that's a long story. <laughs> Go well, on. Well, I went out to design a song. Yeah. For an oil company. Not How are your chops? 
company. For Sorry? Information. Your chops. That was really very memorable. That's good. You can't beat a good chop. Jacket's on fire, Phil. What? Ah! So, um, yeah, so, um, how long did you spend it? Oh, not very long. Should we get the bill? Maloney? Oh, we haven't had dessert yet. Fancy some pudding. I quite fancy a sticky toffee pudding. Would you like some? Yes, please. <laughs> yeah, the night's young, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> Cheers. 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 Oops. Didn't hear you come in last night. Did you, um... Nope. What, didn't Phil...? He tried. Still got the... Uh... Yes. Went for a walk. Isn't that the best thing? So, how long have you two lived together? It's just temporary. I got kicked out of my flat. Oh. It's really nice of Maloney to take me in. Yeah, but it's just temporary. I think I'll get to work. You coming? No, I thought I might uh, come in a bit later and um, go over some stuff here. Okay. You go over your stuff. It's really nice to meet you, Judy. <sighs> Quite a personality. Yeah. Rose really is. Um, yeah. Finish your preliminary. Um... As a matter of fact, I was in the area looking for a flat. Really? To rent or buy? They don't pay very much at the CJRA. No? Oh, well. The rented sector is so flexible, I find. Well, it would be. I don't do so well on the uh, credit checks. Chaotic with your money, hapless with your personal life, and yet you are so efficient in your work. I am good at my job, yeah. Mm. You think I'm a very bad man, but somehow you sense it's all a bit too convenient that I should kill my family so clumsily, so ineffectively. Say it isn't so. Do you have the boy? Oh, really? Oh, you think I'm capable of that? My own nephew? Well, if you didn't commit these murders, then who? What do you think I've thought about in here for four years? Let go. Shut up. Can I help you? That idiot Glover took to wearing a wire every time he spoke to me. Why is it not our style, Marcus? I'm very glad to hear it. Sergeant Glover? He really despises you. Well, he has good reason I ruined his career. Why? Because I could. He got fixated about a fire in a building I owned and he was suspicious. Rightly so. 
Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Somehow I offend Mike's sensibilities, but I don't think he recruited the plots to off my family to frame me up. That would require imagination. Your son? Ah, oh, Max. Ah, oh, you've seen Max. How is my little quizzling? He says you killed his mother. Yes. He says that. She was a drunk. She drove a car over a bridge and maybe I contributed to that. I know you write to him. Does he read my letters? Yes. I'm getting out. It isn't decided. I've thought about things in here. About change. I am getting out. Watch and wonder, Miss Linden. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have toilets I have to clean. Jesus. Am I not allowed any private life? Not when that much suction's involved. All right, all right, listen. I think Julie's terrific, OK? She's interesting and clever and we've got loads in common. And, yes, she's fantastic in bed and she thinks I'm fantastic as well. And we did the lot several times. I didn't know I had it in me. Now, is there anything else you'd like to know? Joyce. Uh, you're wanted in Wallace's office. Rose, Maloney, this is Sir Andy Ross QC. He's counsel to Mr Roche. So, we've arranged to speak to you next week about it. Well, that won't be necessary. Now that the CJRA has referred Mr Roche's case to the Court of Appeal. And I made the referral. On what grounds? Uh, Mrs Roche has changed her testimony. Yes, we think there's a possibility she may be acting under duress. Let me tell you, Mr Maloney, <laughs> That would be a very, very expensive allegation to repeat in public. I expect Mr. Roche to be released on bail pending the appeal. Just hang on. So I would like to commend the CJRA on Mr. Roche's behalf for all your splendid work. Thank you. Yes. I believe that concludes your investigation for now. It does conclude it, does it not? Oh, yes, indeed. Thank you for all you've done. You had no right, you had no authority to do that. Sit down, Rose. What's the matter, Wallace? Too many friends, too much wind in his trees for you. Yes, sit down. I am not dragging this agency into a dogfight with the most expensive lawyer in Britain. That is not the way we do things here. We don't shortcut the whole process just because somebody has money. We have no brief to continue. Officially, you are off it. Unofficial, of course. That's a different matter. Well, I can't be responsible for what you do in your spare time, can I? Which, as of now, I'm giving you quite a lot of. OK. So, is Roche making a monkey out of us? Yep. Well, in that case, I want you to take him down. Hard. OK? Very, very pleased to be taking a first step towards justice. I really don't want to answer questions, but I would like to thank you for coming. That's all for now. Nothing further will be said until Mr. Roche is cleared at appeal. Thank you. You killed him, Rubs. You killed him. What makes you think you're going to get away with it? I really think you ought to move on, don't you? What is that? The eighth, ninth, tenth person you killed now? Huh? What about the others, eh? What about the people that died in flats when you burnt them? They're in the past, club. I rather like you. I burnt her life because I couldn't get out. You killed a rush. What are we doing here, Rose? Just letting him know we care. He's too clever. Oh, we're clever too. 
Well, I am anyway. You're just a girl with a hickey. You a little bit jealous, Rose? You know I am, Maloney. Rose. Hello, Matt. Well, what was all that about? I suppose you can hate someone and miss him like crazy, too. Come on. So, what do we do now? Now we put the fear of God into Roche, not. What are we leaving out here? Well, I suppose we're leaving out the possibility that Roche may be innocent. Well, what do we really know about Alan Richmond and his wife? Perhaps they had other enemies. He'd certainly fallen out with Roche. He'd caused a rift between father and son over money. What, and Roche caused a bloodbath because of that? Oh. No. Why did he want Alan dead? There must be something bigger. Maybe something hidden in the business relationship. So how do we find that out? Well, I'll go through the financial stuff again, see if I can pin down the nominee relationships within the overall holding company frameworks. You see, Maloney, this is why I need you. That only sounds like English on a superficial level. OK. I'll take it home tonight. This came through for you from an estate agent. You still looking for somewhere to live? Now that Maloney's in love's tender grasp and everything. Yeah, OK. Yeah, I'm being really good about this, aren't I? Yes, yes, she is. Yes. Hmm. Apart from Roche, who's still alive who knew Alan Richmond really well, who really knew him? Hello. You didn't say you were coming. Yvette needs to be here when people come. I'm sure you can manage perfectly well without Yvette. Well, what do you want? I can't tell you any more about this. Can't or won't. Can I ask, how does it make you feel? to think your own son killed your husband and daughter and would have killed you if he could. I don't believe that. I won't believe it. I know about Alan and Marcus, why they hated each other so much. No, you can't. Who told you? Max. Max told you. Yes. He's such a bloody fool. He ruined everything. It was all for the boy. For Kenny. Oh, God. We can't let Marcus have him. Don't you see? We had to hide him. Yes, I see. We know you've got it, Max. And your father's free. How long do you think it's going to take him to get it out of her? You did this. No. If this comes out, Max, it's just a matter of how and when. Hi, boys. Hi, Max. Which one is he? Kenny's 15. They grow up, you know. Whose house is this? Jenny's. A friend. She has her own kids, so no one notices one extra. You can't come up. 
He's scared of men, he'll run. Hello? Hello? Yeah, hi, it's me. Hi, stranger. Yeah, yeah, I've been busy. Oh, we've just found someone we were looking for. Look, what are you, what are you doing later? Well, you can do that if you like. It's a big bath. Well, big enough for us to. Yeah, you can light my candle. Okay. I see you in seven. Maloney? Hello? He won't be able to tell you anything. Max, we need to put this right. If your father's guilty, can you see You think anyone? I'm going to put him through all that again? He's 15, like you say. He's growing up. someone. Who's she? She wants to be a friend. Hi, Kenny. How are you? I was wondering if you could tell me some things. What things? I want... I'd like to talk to you about your Uncle Marcus. I'm deaf. Tell her, Max. I can't hear what people say. That's how it goes. That's how it goes. I know this must be a terrible thing for you to think about. But can you remember about the night your Uncle Marcus came to your father's farm? not a friend. I don't hear things. That's how it goes. Listen, I can have him out of here in 20 minutes. We've practiced. you would never see us again. You think your father would harm Kenny, perhaps even kill him, to stop him from testifying again? <laughs> Dad doesn't want to hurt Kenny. It's the last thing he wants. Do you want to illuminate us? My mother, three days before she died. I just got four A levels at Radley. Star days the lot. Not that he bloody noticed. But we went up to London anyway, so that he could at least take us out for dinner. Only we got there early. He was entertaining his sister. Elizabeth, you're um early. Wait outside, Max. No. How long, Danuta? Always. I love him, Elizabeth. Get out, boy. Get out of here. I think it took my mum a couple of days to work it out. Why Dad loved Kenny so much. And that's when she drank herself stupid and went out in the BMW. Dad's sorry. He writes to me. He understands what I did.
technically, Dad and Danuta weren't related. But that wasn't much compensation to Alan. Especially when he realised Kenny wasn't his. Alan told him he would kill him. I wish he had. But instead, he went to my grandfather. Granddad gave Danuta a choice. You either stay with your husband and keep quiet or... Be cast out. And that's why he killed them all. He wants my brother, and he can't have him. He can't have him. So now what do we do? I don't know. Can't let him testify again. No, I suppose not. I need to think. this way. They're not selling very well. No. Area's got a bit of coming up to do, so the managing company will reduce the deposit and waive the credit checks for an early decision. Look around, see what you think. with women who leave town. Leave town? Yep. They actually feel they have to move to another city after getting involved with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am going nowhere. Hmm. <sighs> I've got to do some work tonight, but I don't mind if you want to... Run. No, it's fine. I can read my book. What have you got to do? I'll just go through some evidence. See if I can stop someone getting away with murder. I thought you'd made a breakthrough today. You found the person you were looking for. Well, it didn't quite work out. No? No, we thought he'd be a good witness, but he isn't. Why? Isn't he sure what he saw anymore? Where was this exactly? It doesn't matter. I'm, um, just gonna run a bath. One less woman in your life. Sorry? I've got a flat. I'm moving in tomorrow. Oh. Well, you can have your lover's lair, Maloney. Is she here? Yes, she's... Um... OK. Well, let's celebrate. Nothing. Are you upset because I'm moving out? No. I'm not upset because you're moving out. I'm fine. Okay, well, 
You've had a face on you like a slapped ass since last night, so come on. It's Julie, Rose. She's spying on me. <gasps> she's asking questions, she's going through my stuff. Well, I mean, you're being paranoid. You met you when she ran me down in a supermarket car park, she set me up. It was, what, only a week after we took Roche on? She's that good in bed. Bloody terrific. Well, do you have your memories? Yeah. No, I, I am sorry, Maloney. Why does this keep happening to me, Rose? They don't know you like I know you. Thanks. Where are they? You're not allowed in there. Hey, Max. Sorry. You told him. You bastard! You told him where Kenny was. They broke in last night and took him. Look, if your dad's got Kenny, the police will find him. You think my father would be that careless? Oh, I'm so sorry, Max. I promised my gran I would look after him, and you... You just... He's won. Mr Roche, I promise you nobody at this agency gave away any information. They led him to me. Now keep them away, all right? Keep them away from me. <laughs> no, look, just leave Max. Them, them. I thought you were supposed to be good. Yeah, we are good, Wallace. It's just that Roche is better. You see, if you say that he wanted a reconciliation with his sons, well, he, that is a pretty strange way to go about it. Well, he's kept Kenny away from the retrial. Mission accomplished. You know, Wallace is right. Something's not showing. Facts came through. Not now. It's from Anna Roche. She wants to change her testimony. She's going back to her original story. She'll say she saw Roche at the farm. Oh, call her. I, I just did. She got a cab and said. To where? She's gone into hiding. She's going to stand up to him. Well, there, that kills the appeal. You've got the result you want. Why she do this now? Roche has got her grandson. Has he? Max and Anna, maybe they're just hiding him from us again. sent me a message. I've been suspended. I used to do this in my flat, but I found it got me down in the mornings. Who were they? The people that died when he burnt down Artright Court seven years ago. Artright Court? What? That's nothing. Couldn't nail him for that, of course. He walked away. Just like he's gonna walk away from this one. So what are you gonna do? Go away. <laughs> His, uh... His friends have made sure I never work again. He's beat me. So? What's this? my wire. I don't need it anymore. I'm relying on you, Rose. Don't let me down. Just find a way to nail him. Julie, I'd really like to know. 
For example, who you think you're working for? I don't know exactly. Some newspaper guy. Yeah, and you don't inquire too closely because you're some kind of um, freelancer and you're getting paid. I'm sorry. They wanted to find the boy, but they rang me today and paid me off, so it doesn't matter anymore. Well, it matters. Look, I've never met him, so I wouldn't be able to identify him. No, and... no, no, of course not. Well, you've been paid, why don't you go and get your things? Hello, Joyce, it's Maloney. Hold on a second. Maloney? Maloney? Uh, yes, you've got a, a, a contact on the police computer. Can he match addresses to numbers? Done to my mother, Rose. The landlord. Well, it's difficult to actually prove I own this building, but um, yes. Why? You needed somewhere to live. I thought it might make you think more of me. Well, it doesn't. So what did you say to my mother? Oh, she did it all by herself, Marcus. I had a deep affection for all my family. Especially Danuta. Max told you? Yeah. I'd never heard her. Never. Couldn't. I loved her. I know you find this difficult to bear, Rose, but I didn't kill them. Actually, I'm innocent. You do kill people who cross you, Marcus. Like those Kurdish people who lived here before you burnt them out. That was different. They were standing in the way of commerce, and I only supplied the thugs with the firelighters. They died. And look how beautiful this place is now. You know I would give you this land, anything for my son. <laughs> oh, I know you have, Kenny. What? <sighs> you disappoint me, Rose. I thought you were brighter than that. I've lost so much. All I want is my family. That's all. Yeah. Rose, I'm onto something. Can you pick me up? Give him back, Dad. Max. You're following me. Please. You can't have him. I'm sorry. I swear to you, Max, on your mother's grave, I didn't take him. So... I'm sorry I offend you. I'd like to kill you. That's how it goes with sons and fathers sometimes. 
Stick with her, Max. Believe me, this once. She might be our only hope. Maloney. Joyce turned up a now salon in Peckham, calls to mobiles in Newcastle, Dublin and Japan, and six calls to and from here. Hmm. Well, what else have we got, Rose? Yeah? Parcel! Leave it on the step. Got a sign for it, mate. Just come in. Really, I think you should just step inside. Oh, shit. Go through. Not very civilised, I'm afraid. Sorry, I'd really rather not have to kill you, but I'm not sure there's an alternative. Oh, you have Kenny. Upstairs. Julie proved quite unnecessary in the end. You led me straight to him. Thanks. Couldn't live with it. Marriage was a lie. Son was a lie. Couldn't forgive her. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Will you tell her to be quiet? I need to think. Rose. Why did you kill them all? Because they knew. They knew long before stupid little Max told me. They used me to cover up their filthy little secret. They pimped their daughter to me to make her look respectable. So I punished them. No! No, please! No! What's happening? Oh, God. Please! Oh, God, no, no! No, please, whatever is done, I beg of you, please, leave us alone. We have a child, I'm begging you. You hurt me, Danuta. You think I can live with that? that they shot you with a blank cartridge. Because the whole thing turned on Anna seeing you dead and Kenny hearing Roche's voice. I just taped him in a couple of meetings. I carry it with me everywhere. It cheers me up when I'm down. That's enough. We're leaving. Tell the driver. We're on the move. Oh, you went through a lot of trouble, Anna. He screwed my wife. And now he's suffered for it. Anyway, I have a lot of things to do. And I'm leaving with my son. But he isn't yours, Anna. Well, that's not his fault. And I missed him. It's going to be tough for Marcus. No mum to speak up for him, after I explained to her exactly what would happen to her precious grandson if she did. You think he'll get away? I am away. I have his boy. And I think there's a pretty fair chance that Marcus will go back to jail for the rest of his life. Don't you? It's okay. It stopped. It stopped now. Oh, my God. Genius. Can... May I hear that again? That's enough. We're leaving. Tell the driver we're on the move. 
We're very grateful to you. The appeal being for Mountain, I would say. Oh, absolutely. And uh, I think our case managers should be commended. You do kill people who cross you, Marcus. Like those Kurdish people who lived here before you burnt them out. Hello, Marcus. That was different. They were standing in the way of commerce. And I only supplied the thugs with the firelighters. They died. We'll, um, we'll supply you with a copy, of course, and the police already have the original. So, uh, Sergeant Glover, uh, please feel free to use this office for as long as you like. Marcus Roche. I'm arresting you on the suspicion of murder of seven individuals at Artwright Court Hackney on the 17th of March 1998. Do I have to say Bye-bye, Marcus. Bye. I told you they were good. Does this mean you'll be moving back in, Brett? Have you been missing me, Maloney? Well, I enjoy your company. Is it OK to say that? Yes, it's OK. It's customary to, um, repay a compliment. All right, I enjoy your company too. Thank you. Now, shall we get on? Yeah, next case. Well, that was the last in the current series. Tomorrow night, Trevor McDonald counts down your top 50 news images of history in the making. The shot that shook the world is at 9.45. Next tonight, it's the ITV News in a couple of minutes.